Coming to you straight from the Rio Grande and beyond and beyond broadcasting to the four corners of the globe so grab your seat your coffee or your sundowner okay everybody here we go on point as always this is gloves off gloves off Back at you and gloves off. I'm Professor Withrone. I'm here with MMA fighter from Irving, Texas, Marcus Sursa. And how are we doing today, Marcus? Good, good. Uh, Amarillo, Texas, born and raised. Uh, currently out here now living in Irving. How do you like Irving? You know, I used to have my school up in Irving for many, for many years. We used to be off of Beltline. And it's a great town, great hub, because you get all the different people coming in from Fort Worth and all the mid-cities and Dallas, and they kind of just go through there. So it was a great place to have a school. A lot of great martial artists in that area. Yeah, I love it here because it's close to the stadiums. Uh, AT&T, Globe Field, uh, close to Six Flags, close to downtown Dallas, close to, you know, Fort Worth, close to a lot of, a lot of cool little spots, a lot of areas. Absolutely. You know, um, fighting in the ring, as you well know, takes a separate kind of breed. Not everybody will do it. Everybody wants to do it, but not everybody's going to do it. And going inside is one thing. Training for a fight is another. And continuing that road is that. So I'm very proud of what you've done. And uh, everybody out there fighting, you know, hats off because it it takes courage. It takes will and dedication. A lot of people don't know that. They just think that you can just jump in and do what you want. No, it doesn't. But let's touch a little bit about you, Marcus. How did you get involved and how did you say, you know what, MMA is for me? Oh, 1996, 97, we had uh, stuff called shoot fights in Amarillo. And we had a guy named Steve Nelson. My wrestling coach, Ali Elias, was from Iran. And uh, he fought in the shoot fights. So some me and my brother were always interested in, you know, we watched all the UFCs, you know, and this is before the UFCs, uh, but we watched all the Pancras in uh, Japan and watched a lot of the shoot, shoot over there and stuff. And uh, we, I, we were always interested in it, you know, uh, since little kids. I've wrestled since I was four years old. Uh, so really, I, I got into this when I was four, you know, wrestling. I think wrestling is one of, one of the most deadly arts in, in mixed martial arts. Um, Absolutely. It's a lot of pressure. It teaches a lot of uh, confidence. Uh, always go forward, you know, meet, meet the, the um, opponent head on, you know, don't, don't step back. Uh, it's helped in a lot of my fights. But uh, I, 1999, long story short, um, my coach was, uh, had a tournament, and uh, they had a middleweight tournament for uh, guys my size. And my brother actually was on the card. My brother Josh was fighting go to the weigh-ins, one of the guys backs out of the tournament, and they needed somebody to fight. I was 16 years old, uh, 1999. My coach looked at me, my brother looked at me, you want to fight? Heck yeah, I want to fight, put me in, you know? So I went in the tournament, ended up uh, slamming the first guy, knocked him out with a slam, and then armbarred the second guy, won the tournament. Congratulations. Thank you, yeah. It is crazy. Crazy start to, you know, uh, over 20-plus year career now, you know, and uh, it's crazy it's gone so fast. It's been like a like snap of a finger, you know, crazy. It, it is, you know, and uh, and to continue that route, you know, how – where are you training out of now? Who, where's your, what stable are you out of? Uh, I – well, I'm at, I was at Black House MMA in Redondo Beach, Gardena, California, and uh, – the pandemic hit, had some stuff set up there, had fights scheduled there. Um, pandemic hit, boom, gyms closed. Everything shuts down. You know, I was doing other jobs, odd jobs on the side, to, you know, to survive, to make it to the fight. This COVID kind of, you know, it's like kind of scary, you know, doing jobs in the public, you know, with all this stuff going on and everything. And I was like, man, you know, is it worth – I was just basically working to pay rent, 
I lived in a little studio apartment for 1500 bucks a month, you know, <laughs> Redondo Beach is, uh, it's beautiful area, but wow, you know, like it's expensive. And then the pandemic and then my parents are getting older. I spent, you know, 20 plus years tra- chasing this dream all over the world, uh, done fights all over. And I haven't got to spend a lot of time with them, you know, so they were kind of like, you know, eh, maybe this is a time for you to come home, you know, and, you know, help us while you're here and, you know, get back doing, you know, on a schedule. So I'm back here in uh, Irving now with my parents, my, my family and uh, trying to get back on the, you know, back on track uh, just one day at a time, you know, working every day, uh, work nights. So work nights and try to train, you know, we start at 7 PM and I go to work at one a.m. you know so try to sleep <laughs> figure out you know time in between there you know it's tough absolutely so your your upcoming bout is when march 12th so you're not you got a month to go so you're training yeah, now got we had a good training camp so far uh had some speed bumps and uh stuff kind of happened in the camp uh see what happens um I go today to see uh, for the medicals and all the checkups and everything to get cleared for the fight. So as you get older, uh, they make you do different uh, medicals now, like over a certain age, 37, 38, they want you to do like a CAT scan and all these other MRIs and all this other stuff. So, you know, hopefully everything goes well on those. And uh, then finish out the rest of this camp with George and, Go beat this guy up on the 12th. Take that belt home. Absolutely. Where's the fight going to be? The fight's versus Steve Walker. It's in uh, Hutchinson, Kansas. Um, it's like a small, small town, but I guess they have the Golden Gloves boxing up there. Kansas has some good fighters, but, you know, let's bring it home to Texas. Yeah, yeah. Belt's coming home. Belt's coming home. Let's bring it, let's bring it home and – and, uh, you know, let's, let's keep on moving forward. And, and uh, you know, North Texas, the Dallas area has had many great fighters, many great, not only boxers, many great uh, kickboxers and MMA fighters as well. So, you know, the oldest world champ that I can think of there was probably Curtis Coates, you know, boxing, who's, who used to teach, you know, taught me a couple of things back then, you know, and, uh, you had Donald Curry, you you have uh, Troy Dorsey, you have Raymond McCullum, Alan Steen, Keith C. All those guys back then were all great champions, you know, that were out of that area. And you have a couple of great MMA fighters as well. And you have some great stables, you have some great gyms, you have some good martial artists in that area. Yeah. That 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 has always been been uh, been good with with the competition wise, you know, and. Uh, it's it's amazing to see, and I'm glad that you're still doing it. And what do you see next? Let's say you, this fight goes through. What are you looking at? What what's what what's uh, your ultimate goal now? I I don't really have like I don't know. You know, like I'm just glad I'm fighting still. Uh, I'd like to get a win. Uh, I'm trying not to look too far into the future. Trying to focus on. This 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 fight, you know, and uh, really focus on performing well for this one. This guy is undefeated, uh, multiple time world champion, defending world champion. Um, he doesn't know uh, he doesn't know he doesn't know defeat too well. You know, he's beat everybody he's fought, so he's lost some in the amateurs. I watched some of those fights, uh, analyzed some of the things that he didn't do well. You know, uh, capitalize on those things that I can see where he's open. And uh, put him in a different fight than he's ever been into on the 12th, you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. And let's, let's, let's do that. The best, of, the best for you. Keep on doing. Keep us, keep us informed. For sure. If you have anything coming out, you know, we'll pu- push it through this, uh, your fight. We'll push it through, uh, through gloves off. Whatever we can do, we'll do, you know, help you guys out. I appreciate and that. The best, the best to you. And um, what are your, what are your, you know, after a while, 
something happens that we just say, you know what, we're not going to be back in the ring for whatever reason. But the sport never leaves. When you stop, are you going to continue teaching kids out there, teaching? Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll always uh, give back. I want to give back to the, the kids coming up that are coming through the ranks now. Um, I still do personal trainings and stuff. Like, I got my mats and I got mitts and uh, got all the, you know, training equipment for coaching. Um, I opened up my own gym in Amarillo, uh, uh, MMA lessons, but uh, I, I needed um, – I needed a business partner, someone who is uh, a little better with managing uh, memberships. I, every, I, everybody came in. I wanted to let them train for free and like, you know, come on, this you know, help everybody, you know. But when you own a business, you gotta be uh, you gotta be ruthless, and you gotta, like, you know, even if it's your friends, you gotta, you know, you gotta make them pay to come train. And I wasn't too good at that that area, so. My dream is to uh, one day open up another MMA lessons. It, maybe as uh, so with all this pandemic, it'd be perfect time to do it online. You know, open it up one online and see how it goes, and maybe open up a, a hub gym, city gym somewhere. Um, if it starts getting big enough, you know. But uh, yeah, that's my goal. That's my dream. My passion. Uh, been in martial arts my whole life. It's all I know. It's the only thing I'm uh, truly passionate about. And uh, I. I Pray one day that God gives me an opportunity to give that back. You know. All right, well, it's already doing it. So, like I said, wishing you the best, great success, and uh, keep us informed. And uh, to all those fighters out there and other fighters that you know out there that are coming out there, you know, send them our way because the best way is for everybody to understand that there's folks out there that are continuing their passion pushing forward and actually trying to, to keep these sports alive, even though in this time of, of the pandemic that we have, you know? Yeah. I'd like to get you and Sifu Redman. Um, he's Wing Chun uh, sure. specialist. Yeah. He's, uh, he's, um, oh, um, see, he's a Sifu, Sifu uh, master. I think Sifu master. Sure. And yes. man, awesome guy trained with it, man. Uh, he's out of Redondo Beach, California. Um, yeah, but man, one day you're ever out in that area. If you guys get together, I could uh, send you over to his man. One of the coolest guys. Even like, man, in and out of training, like so much knowledge, so much wisdom. Uh, just such good energy, you know. Um, would be awesome if you guys could connect, or maybe he could come because he does seminars all over the country. And maybe I could have him uh, come to a seminar at your school and uh, sure. teach, teach you guys. He's an unbelievable instructor. Absolutely. You know, most martial art instructors out there, they're great, great people. They want to give back to the community. There's a great I've, – I've met way so many through the travels of, of, of my time, you know, and great people that and years later you still call them up and, you you know, let's go grab coffee if you're in the town and they'll do it. They'll just drop it. And that's just the way there it is. And – and martial arts is that way because you might have a friend that all of a sudden moves to Boise, Idaho yeah. and says, you know what? I want to put my son in a school. More likely some, what some of our associates that we know has a friend that has a martial arts school in Boise, Idaho. That you can direct that person too. you know, so it's, even though it's a big group, it's still a small knit group. Everybody knows each other one way or another. Yeah, it's like a fraternity worldwide. I the best way I could explain it was, uh, I fought in a lot of different countries, and you'd always go to the other country. You couldn't understand their language. Like, you, know, you spoke German, I spoke English. You spoke Portuguese, I spoke English. But what was always amazing to me was the martial arts was universal. You could show a move, and they go, "Yeah, look, boom, boom. This is how you do the move. This is another way. Boom, boom, boom." That language is universal language. You know, so absolutely. Pretty Absolutely. cool, you know. Absolutely. I would say that cuisine, music, pugilism is a universal language. Yeah, for sure. That's awesome. Marcus, you have a great day. Thank you for, for your time. Keep up that energy. Go get that belt and bring it to Texas. Yes, sir. Thank you. Love Alrighty. to come back on after uh, we get that title. And, uh, you know, shout out to all my supporters and all the people 
helping me get to this point and uh, always sticking with me, not giving up on me. Uh, you know, I'm coming off – the funny thing, I'm coming off of wins, not even losses. Um, but it's just been – it's been hard, man, to get no, – all the shows are, are – you know, only the big shows right now is going right now, UFC. All the other shows, you know, there's been maybe one or two fights. Like back in the old days, you would wait a year or two years before the fights or, you know, you'd have like a long time before the pay-per-views. You know, man, now it's the same. So, you know, thank God we're back to halfway getting shows back together and people in the seats. And I pray that, you know, this coronavirus – and these other strands, you know, we got these other three strands, UK virus, the South African virus, and then the Brazilian virus, and then the corona. Man, you know, like, <laughs> it's something's got to happen, you know. It's, we got to get a break on this and uh, get back to normal, you know, hopefully soon. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think we will. And I think we, we as fighters have to keep motivating the others to keep fighting and not living in fear. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think it's opened up a lot of our really? eyes so we can have training that's outside the gym. Start your training at home. You know, start your training with your kids. Start your training with your family. That's the most important, you know. That's who's going to be there to protect you when, in the end, you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I started with my uncle there at, at his house. You know, he used to have a uh, – they used to, he used to do upholst upholstery back then, and he had a room where he used to train a couple of people. And that's what I learned. And I learned that for the longest time, you know, the, and, awesome. and that's just the way it is. You know, when I went to Dallas, I went to Dallas, you know, I graduated at 16. At 18, I was teaching Savant in North Texas martial arts in, in Arlington. Just the way it is, you know. So yeah. I was 18 at the time. And I'm wow. among, among, among the, and, and I was teaching among the grades of that martial art place, you know, and they all accepted you as a brother, you know, Bill Salsa. Uh, Grandmaster Bill Sosa, Richard Peralta, Tommy Burks, all those guys, they accepted, you know, Greg Ellis, and because we were teaching amongst them, and still learning, and still going, and training in other arts, and training, and, and continuing moving forward, that's just the way it is, and martial arts is a big family, and, and we need to keep pushing forward with that, because it's a good knit group, there's a couple of knuckleheads like in every other family, but it's okay, you know, but um, it's a, it's a place where positive energy moves forward. Um, it's a place where a lot of kids become great citizens in society. Maybe not everybody's going to be a fighter, but at least they learn some core things of not to fear, not to problem solve, not to break down and you, and more than, more than that, more than anything, be dependable. That's what fighters do. You go to the gym, you're going to be the sparring partner of somebody else. You, they depend on you to be there. You know, that other person might be going to the ring, but you're still dependent on being there because you're the sparring partner. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. <clears throat> and yeah, a lot of people don't look at that. Yep. Yeah. Suicide prevention has been a big thing. That, uh, Dustin Poirier, you know, the Good Fight Foundation, they've been really focusing on this. Since this pandemic and people getting um, – separated and put into isolations and stuff a lot a lot of people have been doing committing suicide it's been a lot of suicide since it started and uh, i think having that community having those guys checking on you hey where have you been you're not a practice you know what's going on what's where you been what's up that prevents a lot of that stuff people getting isolated and want to just do some yeah, permanent a permanent uh solution to a temporary problem you know Absolutely. And uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Absolutely right. Well, my Marcus, you be safe. Yes, sir. Win. And uh, folks out there, you guys live in, live, live life and let's stop living in fear. Be cautious. Understand. If you like the show, link it, like, like and share it. You know, that's what I do. And, and if you guys want, Subscribe. We've got great, great information coming out. And great info on fighters. Great info on just community all the way around. It's you guys out there that are bringing me to go out there and look for great individuals like Marcus to come out and tell us his story. And I want to thank you for that because thank each you. martial artist is a piece of the puzzle. Yes. It's awesome. Be safe, my brother. 
Thank you. You too. Good talking with you. Hope to see you soon. Uh, yeah, I want to bring the belt back and uh, do some photos. I'll take some photos. Absolutely. Come back and make. Thank you, brother. Bye. God bless. Today in America, more than 5.5 million men, women, and children train in a martial art regularly. Bowie Tarun Academy has been serving Laredo for over 30 years now. Our adult classes are geared for producing the best in you, teaching you street-ready techniques. With the arts of Savat and Kinpo, you'll learn the traditions of these sciences of combat as passed down professor to student. Hello, everybody. My name is Senior Grandmaster of Peter Bandalam, owner of DDP, Bandalam Masif Paris. I'd like to say a few words on Grandmaster Paul Vitron. He's a man of great integrity, a man of great knowledge of martial art. He's a master of sabbat and master of iskrima. He's a man that can help you to become of what you want to be. He's a man that teaches people how to be somebody in life, how to be, how to work the world how to be happy in this world. He's a man that I can say hold many, many integrity as well as in martial art. But I'd like to say this man has a radio station, does hunting all over the world, and he works with all kind of people, all walks of life. All I, all I want to say that Paul Vitron is a man that can help people to be somebody in life. I'd like to say aloha. Thank you. I am Grandmaster Michael Duran of Original Huron Discriminal Federation here in Vallejo, California. Professor Paul Boutron is an accomplished martial artist who has developed an understanding that as a caretaker, in our martial arts. It is a responsibility to keep the art alive and in depth. He acknowledged that it is the students that give the art life. I hold his friendship and his continuing accomplishments in the art in the most highest regard. Thank you. Come train at the best kept secret of Laredo. Give us a call for your free evaluation at 956 401 4868 or check out our website at savat.biz follow us on youtube and facebook